If you go over to the typical Johnny Fitness channel, or even the channel of a highly respected doctor who just happens to sell concentrated hot dog juice pills on the side. Dr. Bombay, I don't think Esmeralda's going to be able to hang in there much longer. How you doing? Guess what? These guys know everything about calories. Even though they never looked at a shred of the actual data that was used to come up with these ideas. Carbs are 4 calories per gram, protein is 4 calories per gram, and fat is 9 calories per gram, and it's oh so scary. But if we go back and look at the actual data, we see something different. Highly saturated fats, for example, are only 5.5 calories per gram, and glucose is almost 5 calories per gram. You are speaking of deception, lies. It is a concept we are beginning to learn at some great cost. To come up with these caloric values, the method used was basically to light various substances on fire within a confined space and see how much heat was generated. Calories are really a measure of energy, but whenever they talk about calories today, they're really talking about heat generated. For example, exercise for humans does very little actual work when it comes to caloric energy, but it can raise up the temperature of the body quite a bit, and this is what they're actually measuring. Interestingly, various fats burned yield completely different results than these caloric tests. The ones that score the highest are vegetable oils with over 9 calories per gram each. In reality, most fats were shown to produce less than 6 calories per gram, but they decided to ignore this fact. I believe they did this to demonize fats because the results for carbs are also off. Glucose determined through testing to be about 4.65 calories per gram, which you could round up to 5, but instead they decided to round down to 4. This isn't really normal practice, and it should have been rounded up. Well, at the time, levels for fats should have been estimated using the typical fat composition in the diet, which would have put it closer to 6 calories per gram, or even less. Of course, this doesn't take other effects into account, such as ATP uncoupling and mitochondrial health benefits of fat burning, which is going to up the amount of calories you burn over time. But aside from all that, this information is simply fraudulent. Your Honor, I object! And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case! Overruled. Good call! All of this measurement happened in the early 19th century. It's hard to believe today, but the reason this was necessary is that at the time, we had no idea that ATP even existed. It was really only in the 30s that we started to have some idea how energy production in cells worked. And I'm talking about the 1930s, not the 2030s, in case someone is watching this video in 20 years. And it wasn't until the 50s that ATP was firmly understood as the basis for energy production of cells in the body, at least by some people, somewhere. It amazes me to think that by the time this information was trickling into college textbooks, my father was already out of high school and in the military. The military is also the source of the push to promote calories as a concept starting way back in what was called the Great War at the time. At the time, English and American troops had a ration of a pound of beef a day. With the large number of troops involved and the large number of men pulled away from farms, it was very difficult to provide properly nutritious food for the troops. This led to sharp rationing on the home front. And what did measuring this rationing rely on? Well, calories. The scientists who did the original work on calories were not fraudulent. They certainly reported their findings. However, this was later completely misrepresented in order to fill out the American diet with more carbs and fewer animal products. So in essence, calories are a conspiracy. 
and this made it much easier to at least pretend to provide enough real nutrition for the populace because it's a lot easier to get a bunch of grain than it is to make real food like animal products. But now, over 200 years later, does the calorie even make any sense as a unit of measurement? Now we understand how ATP works today and how it's produced, at least to a good extent. And in that context, not really. At the end of the day, what essentially happens in the human cell is that the fuel is split up into small chunks of carbon and hydrogen and burned to create energy. At least that's what happens in the best case scenario for energy production. Whether you look at glucose, fructose, or any type of fat imaginable, the truth is they're just carbon and hydrogen and a bit of oxygen arranged into different patterns. While there is more oxygen by weight and carbs than fats, this is offset by the fact that the fats have to be broken down. Basically, it all gets broken down into vinegar and then burned. The larger the molecule is, though, the more work that's needed to separate these carbon-hydrogen chunks, which then have to be used to create ATP through oxidation. PUFAs have far smaller molecules, so that's probably why they measured at 9.1 calories, while saturated fats measured much lower and keep in mind these were actual foods like cocoa butter and so on, not measurements based on pure stearic acid or palmitic acid, and those would have scored a lot lower. When you burn fat, you also expend a lot of ATP on cleaning up free radicals, but you do a lot less with carbs. Paul Saladino claims carbs are a more efficient fuel than fats, and in a sense he's right. But what that means in terms of calories provided is more calories per gram, not less. A lot of the energy we get from carbohydrates doesn't come from the same process either. That is, it doesn't waste any ATP cleaning up its production of free radicals by using oxygen, i.e. oxidative phosphorylation. This process is completely impossible when it comes to fat because with fat, this can only be done with oxygen. So if you ever wondered where the free radicals and acidity produced in your cells are coming from, this is it, it's from carb burning. Almost all of it is produced that way. Fat burning is almost completely safe in this respect and also requires a lot of energy to perform. And a lot of that occurs before you even get to the Krebs cycle. So in reality, there's fewer calories in fat than you think especially in saturated fats, and it's definitely fewer calories than in carbohydrates when it comes to stearic acid, palmitic acid, and arachidonic acid, for example. And carbs are five calories per gram, not four, as is always claimed. So if you still believe it's all about calories in, calories out, then fat wins again, or rather animal fat and a few plant fats like cocoa butter win. Stay away from vegetable oil though. This is very poisonous stuff and it also has almost twice as many calories as other fat sources. It's definitely not something you want to be consuming if you're looking to impress people with your physique. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Bam! All right, what's up? Am I hitting the light right? What? Did What's happening? I really, I don't really know what's going on here, though. I'm not going to go into all the hormonal effects of different foods on hunger, because I've done that in many other videos in the past. I also won't go into why fasting is the only reliable way to lose weight, but I do want to talk about calorie counting a bit. I also want to talk about small caloric deficits, too. Aside from animal fat, actually having fewer calories per gram in spite of 100 years of government lies saying the opposite, you really can't even count calories. Like the original caloric tests over two centuries ago, the nutritional value of things like vitamins and so-called macros were only performed and published a few times. They were also done when the food supply was vastly different. It was all organic and the farming and ranching practices were much, much different. A great deal of selective breeding has gone on since then, especially when it comes to grains and fruits, 
which have been bred to provide way more carbs and proportionally less protein over time. For animals like chickens and cows, it's the opposite. They have way less fat and way more muscle, proportionally speaking, and much more than these animals ever would have had in nature. Because remember, these animals and also these plants have been bred for thousands of years. The eggs are probably also much less fatty than these old values would suggest. And it is basically impossible to tell how much fat is in a cut of meat, unless it's a cut like chicken breast or eye of round that has been specifically where all of the fat around it has been cut away and you have nothing but pure protein or at least less than 1% fat. That means that even food produced in some giant food factory owned by China, which includes Tyson chicken by the way, can't really be controlled for caloric content very well. No one really knows how many calories are in the basic components that they're using, so they can't have any clue what the final result's gonna be. It gets worse. Not only do they not have accurate data to rely on, they're also allowed to round the calories down to the nearest 10, even if it's as high as nine. So instead of 109 calories, they can say 100 calories instead. And you can bet that the more savvy companies are pushing that boundary right up to that edge. This is compounded by the fact that they make serving sizes as low as possible, even when these sizes are very unrealistic. I mean, a serving of cereal, for example, is way tinier than any bowl that I've ever seen. It's basically just a mouthful. This is even worse for things like ketchup, where a serving size might only be 10 calories on paper, but in reality it was rounded down from 19. Plus we know the real calories and carbs is even higher than that. So you may think each serving is only 10 calories, but if you have a large number of servings, like 10 or 20, it's going to really add up because in reality, it has closer to 23 calories, well over double the amount that's listed. That means it's essentially impossible to count calories even if you believed that was what was needed to keep your diet healthy. I constantly see fitness influencers say they're cutting 500 calories a week from their diet. The truth is, this is less than 100 calories a day. And if you eat 2000 calories a day, there's just no way on earth to count calories that closely, even if you're doing it on an industrial scale, let alone doing it at home. And the only way to really do that would be to eat only rice and boneless, skinless chicken breast. And that's really about it. And even those values are basically somewhat fraudulent. It's also not going to lead to any weight loss anyway. Your body constantly adjusts your metabolism because it doesn't really want to lose weight. So even if you cut 500 calories every day, you can forget it. This flimsy deficit won't lose you a single ounce of actual fat. This is one of the many reasons fasting works for weight loss and diets don't. Your body knows how to deal with no food, but it starts to behave erratically when you have very little food. It goes into panic mode. And you can be sure all of these tiny adjustments are not going to do anything at all, or if it does, it'll be something negative. And not to mention that these guys are always eating the worst foods imaginable. So you saw me eat that hot pocket I found in the garbage? Yes. Any thoughts on that? No. Oh man, I like you. Come on in. I like you. <laughs> yeah. I've talked a lot about calories in, calories out but I've been meaning to make this video for a long time now. Aside from the nonsense idea that this is what weight loss and maintenance are about, all of these values are bald-faced lies. In reality, saturated fats provide fewer ATP per gram than carbs, and that's because they produce fewer end result ATP per gram. That's because it requires ATP to break down these fats, and it uses up a lot of ATP to clean up after itself which is something that happens much less in carbs. And that's why burning carbs for energy causes a great deal of free radical production in cells, at least 66% more than fat burning. The caloric values we hear for carbs are also a lie, and they actually are closer to five calories per gram than four, 
On the other hand, vegetable oil is not only a poison, but it also contains many more calories than saturated fat or than carbs. So don't think all fats are created equal. Animal fats in general are much healthier and they're almost always far less caloric. Though there are a few like cocoa butter that have less calories. But keep in mind that aside from calories, they don't have any vitamins like A or D or K2. From a caloric perspective, fat from grass-fed animals is also going to have fewer calories per gram. That's because it's going to have fewer PUFAs. And by the way, the PUFAs that they do have will be the healthy ones. All of these PUFAs are not the same and all of these omega-3s are not the same either. Plus it will be a lot more nutritious on top of that. But if you, like me, can't afford to eat grass-fed steaks all the time, then you're still infinitely better off with any animal product you can afford. So don't give up just because you have a tight budget. So you gave up? I did. I gave up on giving up. And don't fall for the lies of the nutrition and fitness industry because the organizations that fund all of the scientific research that their education is based on only care about profits, not you. And it's ultimately you who's responsible for your own health and happiness. Because if you don't make it, it's your own damn fault.